Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today, dear viewers, we are looking at the bully syndrome and the false sense of victimhood a person can take on. So, in Jungian psychology, what you can see is a lot of time we refuse to admit to bad behavior, stress, or toxic emotions or toxic behavior in ourselves. That seems to be the general pattern. Everyone tends to generally assume that they are right and that they are doing good and that they have good intentions and that everyone else around them is doing wrong, is having bad intentions, is being bad and often they are being bad to you, right? So when you look at the 16 personality types, what can you learn about the consciousness and self-consciousness in regards to uh, pride and shame and to good or bad in ourselves and in other people. Well, the general pattern is this. People tend to only want to identify with positive characteristics. When defining ourselves, when looking for a personal type, we tend to only want to agree with things that point, uh, paint ourselves in a good light. We want to hear good things about ourselves and we don't want to hear bad things about ourselves. As soon as something bad is said about our personal type, we close the tab, we stop reading, we're done. Oh, okay, this was not right, oh, I didn't relate to this, this cannot be me, I'm definitely not like that. And then there begins the system of rationalization, so I must be another type, or oh, this must be a bad article, or this must forget something, or forget to account for something, or forget to explain something important uh, that makes up for what I did, or that explains it, or makes it even good. So, what can you say about bullying? Well, most people tend to spring from a sense of victimhood. What that means is people tend to assume that they are the victims of bad behavior rather than the people that do or commit bad behavior. So we do not see ourselves as bullies. We see ourselves as victims speaking out for ourselves. So this circle, this sense of victimhood tends to lead to a desire to protect yourself. The more you feel that you are a victim or that you are innocent or that you are vulnerable, the more you feel that you must protect yourself against other people. You must protect yourself from bad behavior from other people. You must protect yourself from other people attacking you or being, aggressing you or trying to stop you or trying to be mean to you. And so this tends to lead to bullying those around you. This is the primary reason why people bully. People bully because they are afraid of being bullied. They use that fear of aggression to propel aggression towards other people. Now, I tend to paint feeling perceiving types and thinking judging types as the most likely to have this bully victimhood complex. What that means is when you're an INFP or an ESTJ, a lot of time you have these kind of rationalizations within you. You have this feeling of victimhood and you have this desire, this need to protect yourself. You see the self as something to protect and you see yourself as somebody who has to be strong and tough and often stronger than what you are at the moment in order to protect yourself. So no matter if you're an INTJ or an ISFP or an ESFP or an ENTJ, there is this need to speak out for yourself and to speak out for who you are and to be yourself and to say what you believe is the truth and to be assertive and aggressive and strong in yourself in order to protect the self. So... The bullying of other people naturally leads to a desire to once again protect yourself. So once again to seek to make sure that you uh, are not harmed. If you do something mean to other people, if you say something you shouldn't have, once again that leads to a desire to protect yourself and a feeling that oh no, now people are going to strike back even more. And once again that fuels this sense of victimhood. Why are people attacking me? I'm only saying the truth. Why are people going against me? I'm only being myself. And so that's the system of rationalization. And it all connects to, I cannot possibly be the bully. I cannot be the one in the wrong here. There has to be some external factor, something outside of me that is the culprit of this action. So what is the general theme here? A lot of time when you look at flow and stress, Flow is the preferred state of every single person. 
Flow comes from inside, stress comes from the outside. What that means is our perception of a cruel or horrible world around us that is mean to us gives us stress. And that gives us, and that brings us to the inferior function. So an INFP under stress goes to thinking judging. An ENTJ under stress goes to feeling perceiving. That's the general theme. We go to our opposite when confronting and when being conscious of stress. And when we think about the stress function, we think of it as something that is outside of ourselves. This is not me. This is something that is done to me. I am not doing these things. I am having these things done to me. So in stress, we feel that we are doing something out of force from an external environment or out of necessity because we have been pushed by other people. We use the stress functions as tools to defend or protect ourselves from a harsh or perceived harsh environment. So what you can see with feeling perceiving types is this kind of flow status, this flow hero complex. So as long as I am being myself, as long as I'm being authentic, as long as I'm being honest, I cannot possibly be in the wrong. Similarly, with thinking judging types, you see this uh, reverse status of it doesn't matter how I do it or what I say, as long as I can get it done, as long as I am able to meet our goals and to do the work that we have to do as a tribe or as a group, I am excused for anything I say or anybody I hurt or anything unethical I might do to get this to happen. The outcome justifies the means. Now, these types, they tend to go to a sense of uh, uh, rationalization of why are people attacking me? So feeling perceiving types tend to feel they are being attacked for who they are. You are being attacked because of your identity, because of how you dress, how you look, how you talk, who you are, your identity. Things that are true to yourself that cannot possibly be changed or altered. So, why are people attacking me because of me being myself? That's the rationalization here. And with thinking judging types, it's also something similar. It's why are people attacking me? I am doing everything I can to get our important work done. I am trying to further our goals. I'm trying to make sure we meet our deadlines, that we do what we need to have done. So why are people trying to stop me? Why are people questioning me? Why are people getting in my way? With feeling perceiving types, it's also that it doesn't matter that I hurt other people's feelings. It doesn't matter what I do, as long as I am being honest, as long as I'm being true to myself. Similarly with thinking yearning types, it's, it doesn't matter that I'm pushing people around. I'm only trying to help them get their job done. And here it comes back to, you know, that people are always judging me slash attacking me for who I am. People are always trying to stop me because they are jealous of my success or skill. So what can you do? What is this? What is this spiral? What is happening here? Well, for a feeling perceiving type, it's refusing to acknowledge any poor execution or any poor work or any poor strategy or anything you do uh, because you are being honest or that you are being true to yourself. Your higher ethics and your strong individuality makes you free from any blame or any criticism from the external world. Now, let's say this. It's good that you are being honest and that you are being true to yourself. But you should still try to work on how you execute projects and how you work and what you do. Your identity does not make up for issues at work or failures to meet goals or deadlines or to hold yourself to rules or standards that you agree to or have together as a family or a group or in your friendship circle. You cannot only hide behind your flow functions. Anything you do to your flow functions is good, it's even great, but a failure to use other cognitive functions leads to this uh, blind spot, this massive blind spot of 
failing to deal with problems in your life. Similarly, for thinking judging types, it's that refusing to acknowledge that you have uh, your own individuality, you have your own ethics, that you have your own standards that you need to hold yourself to. It is great that you're working hard and that you have strong goals, but you should still try to maintain a solid and healthy sense of ethics while you do this. You should still say and hold yourself to a standard for what is right and wrong. And you should still um, try to be authentic and real when you talk about things and honest with other people. ENFJs and INTPs, they're not free from the cycle. This is not something that the INFJs or ISTPs stand outside of. Feeling judging types and thinking perceiving types, they have a different frame of consciousness where there is no bully and there is no victim. A lot of time these types tend to instead have a frame of consciousness that has to do with guarding and protecting their own innocence or sense of righteousness. So with feeling judging types, yeah, you can be a bad guy, you can be a bad person, you can sometimes do things that are wrong or that are bad. You cannot constantly hide behind your sense of self-righteousness. So often these types, they tend to come off as perfect. They like to come off as perfect. They like to come off as the do-gooders, the uh, people that are always doing good, that are always right, that are always correct, that always do things flawlessly without any problems, without any issues. They never make mistakes. They do everything right and they do everything in a good way and with good intentions. Now, these types, they can, because they are self-righteous, rationalize bad behavior. A lot of time, these types, what they fall into grip of is they avoid or pretend or ignore any kind of mistakes that they do or any kind of selfish behavior they do. They pretend not to see things. They pretend not to notice. They ignore it or they say, oh, whatever, it will be fine. Oh, that's nothing. It's not a problem. It's just something small. Doesn't matter. With the feeling, judging and thinking, perceiving types, this all, it leads to a false sense of innocence. I am innocent. I have done good. I have done right. I have done my task. I've done what I said I would. And I have had good intentions in what I did. So I could not possibly have made any mistakes right. So I could not possibly have done anything wrong. Of course, this is um, incorrect and these types are just as capable as any of making sometimes selfish or highly unethical life choices or uh, being cruel or being malicious. Yes, you can sometimes be the bad guy or the bad girl. You can sometimes be the person who has made a mistake. Now, the key to noticing this in yourself is noticing that, yeah, good action will not make up for poor execution. Good execution will not make up for a lack of action. When you're feeling judging type, there can be a thing, this idea that because you do good things, because perhaps you engage yourself with charities or because you uh, contribute or help others around you, you are excused of any mistakes you might make helping other people or in these charities or outside of this. Anything bad you do outside of this, it's excused because you have a good clean slate. You have done other good things in your life. And that makes up. So as an ESFJ or an INTP or an INFJ, note this, that even if you have done good things, or even if you are just trying to help other people, you can still hurt other people. You can still make mistakes. You can still be wrong. You might actually not know how to help this person. You might not actually know what the right answer is. You might be wrong about what the right answer is. And... This means you are not free of criticism. You cannot escape criticism from other people. You cannot pretend not to hear when other people question your judgment. Your good intentions do not completely excuse you from criticism. 
Similarly with the ENTPs and INTPs, it can be this idea that because you have not done anything wrong and because you have done your work correctly, you are not responsible for the team as a whole. If the team fails and you did your task correctly, that is not your problem. You have not done anything wrong. You should not feel guilty because the team failed. What could you possibly have done? You did everything right, right? <laughs> wrong. The thing is, uh, a lot of the time, you cannot completely hide behind your own skill. I mean, you can hide behind your own skill and what you do and your own tasks, but you still will need to sometimes help other people. No matter if you want to or not, sometimes you are going to have to help your team. You're gonna have, have to make sure that they also get their tasks done and that they also get their work done and that they also can be and share in your success. And here is that idea that if you show other people up constantly, if you're competing with others, if you win every argument, if you're always the one that has the sharpest point of view or the sharpest argument or that you have the highest score, that's good enough. Then you shouldn't have to do anything else. Now, you can benefit from studying ENTJs or INTJs here because you know their high goals and their high standards can be quite inspiring for you and they can help you push yourself to go a bit higher. But sometimes you're also gonna have to get down with other people and say, hey, this is what you could do to get a bit higher in score or a bit closer to my score. This is what you could do to improve or I can help you become more successful if you just do this or that trick that I learned. You can share your skills and tricks with other people. And yeah, here's the thing, you know, often as an INFJ, and I'll be honest, I am like this. I struggle when people find flaws and issues with, thing I do, with things I do. When people point out incorrect, incorrect answers or bad spelling or grammar or failures or issues, I immediately go to, but I do other good things. But I do other good things, or I had good intentions, or this is just uh, me trying to help. And so it's that you, you refuse to admit to the fact that you could possibly make mistakes, that you could have bad execution, or that you could be bad at something. You think that you could be good at everything. You think that you can do anything. You think that you can help people, even when you can't help them, or even when you don't know the answer. You think you have the answer, and yeah, that's a problem of refusing to admit to having an XXTP blind spot. The blind spot can be that people are always trying to guilt trip you for the fact that you've done nothing wrong. I mean, you haven't done anything wrong, that might be true. You might have done your work good, but you still could have done more for the people around you. You could still, instead of being lazy or sitting in your corner, you could have gone and pointed out an error or a flaw in the group or in the group work, and you could have helped other people be equally successful to you. So, feeling judging types. It is great that you have good intentions. It is great that you are trying to help people around you, but your flow functions do not excuse a lack of, uh, or an inability to handle stress from thinking perceiving. So you have to also improve your skill and develop talents and abilities and better yourself and learn tasks and tricks you still have to work on yourself and improve on yourself and try to be the best version of yourself possible. So you can help other people better and so that you can make less mistakes while trying to help the world or further a cause or do something good for the tribe or the community. Similarly, thinking perceiving types you might have and you enjoy and spend a lot of time developing your skills and improving on yourself and bettering yourself and you do this a lot and you're great at this and this is something good about you, this is your flow function. But you still sometimes need to use these skills to help the community and to improve things for other people. 
development for an INTP or an ENTP involves, you know, going out, speaking out to the community and helping other people by sharing your skills and talents with others. The whole goal of this uh, video is to help people see blind spots and to recognize and to admit that in a conflict with another person, when you're arguing with other people, you cannot completely free yourself from blame. You cannot uh, ignore issues you have. You cannot focus purely on what you do right or what you do good. You cannot only hold on to the positives of your personal type, but you must also admit to the problems and issues that you have. When you feel that other people are attacking you or vilifying you or being mean to you for no reason, ask for objective feedback from those around you. What could I have done better in this situation? What could I have done differently? Is there something I could have said or done to stop this? A lot of time we need other people to be more objective about our blind spots, but we can also practice and learn to be more objective about our blind spots. And what we can do is we can go immediately to the inferior, practice go, going immediately to your stress functions. I know I can do a lot of good things and I know I can have a lot of good intentions and I have a strong hero function and strong flow state. But what difficult things that I struggle with could I have done differently? What issues or challenges do I know that I have that I could have used or benefit, bettered in myself to handle the situation better? Strive towards a more complete sense of self where you are both capable of being a good person and a bad person, where you are capable of both having strengths and flaws and learn to see yourself from all these perspectives as a whole rather than just focusing on the top of the iceberg. That's part of the goal of uh, Carl Jung's shadow work ideas and that's uh, part of the benefits of studying personality psychology. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you all in the next video. Here above you see some other good videos you should check out if you want to uh, develop yourself in any way or if you're curious about learning more about yourself. And if you enjoy this content, please like, share and subscribe and uh, I hope to see you all in the next video.